Uh, every time I talk, I kind of just change it up. I, I work off the energy of the other speakers. Um, and every time, I'm usually pretty, um, pretty laid back and uh, not so nervous until I actually get up here and speak. Because, I mean, to be honest, um, and John's going to hear this for the second time, I don't, I don't like doing this. I really don't like being up here talking. Did I lose my mic? No, we're good? Okay. I think it's insane that I have to sit up here and remind you of stuff you all know. That you were taught as kids by your parents. That we all want to do, but we don't do. I think it's crazy that we need a simple piece of silicone to remind us to be nice. It's a little bit different. And my topic of pay it forward, I believe, is something so simple in a very complex world that it's going to impact billions. And I'm biased because I'm in it each and every day. I see what happens. I see the stories. I see the people talking about it. I see the people who talk to us and the people we dine with and the people we meet with. I see the influence of who, they're, who we're meeting with and, uh, increase. And I just, I want, people to, I want people to be nicer. I just so desperately want people to be nicer. I had, um, I had the business. For 15 years, I was 15 years old, and I was a very uh, shy, very insecure person that uh, just simply wanted to uh, be around a different age group. That was my escape, to be around adults, to be different. And uh, I had a family business. An aunt and uncle had a family business. They asked me to come and do uh, samples and shipping and what have you, just to go get coffee, go do this, go do that, go do whatever. And I was more than happy to do it because it allowed me to not go to dances in high school. Because I wasn't about to ask a girl out. <laughs> so it was my escape. And one thing that got into my mind was, if I was working, the day I was working and my buddies were screwing off and sloughing, I would be a day ahead. Every week they took to go for vacation, and I was working, I was a week ahead. Every month they took off in the summer just to be a teenager, and I was working, I would be a month ahead. Worked out great. I was, it just worked out awesome. And I also fall, fell into the same trap that most of us do, since TV and advertising has been born, mm. the house, the car, the money, the CEO, the corner office, the prestige, the as soon as I get that stuff, that noun, that thing, I will be happy. And I remember, I'm sure everyone in this room has done it, I continuously remember telling myself, man, there's my wife, come on in. There's no way. Support. <laughs> Um, so anyways, um, I remember telling myself, as soon as I get that platinum credit card, I'll be happy. As soon as I get that raise, I'll be happy. As soon as I get that bigger car, I'll be happy. As soon as I move out, I'll be happy. As soon as I get that girl that I've always wanted, I'll be happy. As soon as I lose five pounds for the summer so I can look good with abs, I'll be happy. And I remember getting every one of those things, which someone who's probably sitting in this room, everything you guys have wanted, you then more than likely have received because we're lucky. That's it. You were lucky to be born in this country. I was lucky to be born in America. A lot are not so lucky. So I got everything I wanted, and uh, every time I just wanted more. And I remember every time I got what I wanted, it never brought me the happiness that I thought it was going to. And then between working and the thing I told you about before, I basically got more than I expected. I had everything. I had my own business. I had the corner office. Uh, I had 250 employees, I had an ungodly amount of money, um, and I would sit on the edge of my bed and just cry, look at my wife and say, what the hell just happened? Now, I'm not the guy up here telling you like most guys do or girls do, talking about how money doesn't bring happiness. If money is what you think is going to make you happy, then by God, go get it. I'm not t this is just a story leading up to uh, hopefully an end that uh, I'll wrap around here sometime soon. Um, I just, I was miserable. And I thought I was that type of guy with an, in line with this, the social enterprise and the philanthropy of that, that entrepreneurial type, that person who took risks, that person who could uh, lay off one person to save a hundred, right? Because it's just business. There's nothing just business in this world. 
my God, it's everything in this world is personal. You lay one person off, you are screwing up their family. But we justify it continuously as business owners to say, but we're saving 100. When you go through tough times like 2008, 2009, you hear about everyone laying people off. But what are the stories that everyone talks about? You hear about that company that's a good-sized company who didn't lay anyone off. Now, why can they do that, but we can't? So, the typical stuff happened. Um, you know, we, we were on tough times and laid certain people off or had to, you know, tighten our belt straps or whatever the cliche thing is. And I thought that I could make that decision, move on, and justify all the money I was making and justify that we were still employing a certain amount of, a good amount of people. But uh, I found out, and the reason I'm speaking for, for here today in front of you is because I found out I'm not that type of person. I'm desperately not that type of person. It just chipped away my soul. Just ripped my heart out of my chest. But I didn't understand what that feeling was for months. Because of our uh, success at such a young age, we had a lot of people come to us and ask us for advice. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. What are people going to ask us? What are we going to do with an answer? And the only thing I remember answering a ton of questions of was, you guys seem happy or you're successful. How do I get there? Because I hate my job, I hate my boss, I hate all this. I hate my company. How do we do what you guys do? And the only thing I would tell them was, if you're unhappy, make a change. Well, this universe works. If you throw out a lot of info, or you throw out a lot of energy, and you help a lot of people and tell them what you think they should do, it's going to throw it back in the face. So it was now my time, my turn, to make that change because I was miserable. I never knew what it was like to not to want to wake up in the morning. I never knew what it was like to watch TV until you can't even keep your freaking eyes open until 1 in the morning because the next day, if your eyes closed, you were going to wake up the next day and have to go do something you did not want to do. I didn't know what that felt like. But then I did, and I was just, I was a mess. I was just a shell of myself. It's a miserable, miserable feeling. And probably for the last three months um, I was at the company, there is a stretch of road in Salt Lake City, Utah, that I can't drive on. When I go to the airport, I have to take the long way, because if I go on that road, I just start shaking and start bawling. But for the last three months, I went to this job that I owned, that I controlled. I would, like, I would stick my head out the window like a dog, turn on house music, to do anything I possibly could to make a fake, just, just to grab happiness, just to grab something, of some type of something that would make me want to go to where I was going. And even the people that I gave, I cared for, even the people that I was doing this for, even the people that I lived at home until I was 28, with my parents in a thousand square foot house, with my wife at the time, she was my girlfriend, sharing a wall with my parents. We all worked for each other. They all worked for me. So a thousand square foot home, 7.30 in the morning, four people going after one bathroom, all going to the same place. A little awkward. No, I loved it. And I stayed there so I could have money in the bank so I could take care of people who needed it. I could give sky miles. If someone had trouble, I could just give them money out of my pocket. I didn't have to take it out of the business, out of my own pocket. Those were the people I was doing this for. They weren't doing it anymore. That's how miserable I was. That's so... I, I, I could not wrap my mind. Imagine having everything you've ever wanted. Think of everything you've ever wanted in your mind right now. What you're fighting for, what you're working for, what you think is going to make what you think is going to make you happy. Having that, and then looking in the mirror and saying, "Good Lord, that's not as cool as I thought it was going to be." That's a weird feeling. And personally, my belief is that's why we're in this world we we are. Because with everything that went on for the past couple decades, we basically got everything we wanted, and we're still not we're we're not not only are we not happier, we're less happy. And, this is a twist, because you all thought pay it forward. You thought you saw a smiling guy with curly hair, and you thought you were going to be rainbows and unicorns, and this perfect positive message. But I think that's wrong. We have negative news, and then we also have tons of books over here just saying, if you want to be happy, just be happy. If you want to see positive, just see positive. We're all right there in the middle. We're all right there in the middle. We see everything. To me, the, the, the people who scare me the most are the ones who are the happiest all the time. Those are the people who snap, go into the post office and do something crazy. You can't be happy all the time. Stop trying to be. And there's also psychology that says if you try and search for happiness, it's going to get further away. 
I don't know what's right, I don't know what's wrong. But part of the reason I do this, even though I don't like it, is because I'm hoping someone in this crowd will help me with these questions. I'm, I'm curious as hell to know why we do what we do. Einstein, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is the definition of insanity, but yet we all do it. We go to that job, we wake up, we don't want to go to, we all pay our taxes, and then what do we do the next year? Then every four years or five years here, you, you, you do it a lesser of the two evils and knock someone in the prime minister or presidency or whatever you're going to do. And then um, every year we think it's going to be different. Every year, this is going to be the year, right? Every year, this, you know, we're going to do something different. Every year, we're going to quit that job we don't like. Every year, we're going to take more time with our family. Every year, I'm not going to freak out that guy that cuts me off in traffic. Every single freaking year, we say we're going to be nicer and we're not. But yet, one time a year, around Christmas time, all of a sudden, we care about homelessness and poverty and helping the world. Um, and everyone hangs their hat on that, and uh, it's a badge of honor, and they tell the whole world and their family about, I, I went down to the homeless shelter for a weekend. Great, I don't want you to end that, I don't want you to stop that, but what are you doing the other 51 weeks? Even for the people who go down to Africa and build a, an orphanage for two weeks? Awesome. Don't want to put an end to that, but what are you doing the other 50 weeks? Because I would have, let me ask you a question. Do you guys believe the world's in a good spot? No one ever agrees with me about that. I don't believe so either. No, they do agree. Yeah, okay, you get what I'm saying. No one believes in this audience, and usually who we speak with, no one agrees that the world is where it should be. Who has kids? Some of you do. Do you want the world to be better for your kids? Awesome. Simple, right? You don't like where the world is, but you want it to be better for your kids, for your family, for your friends, for future generations. So, we're at a little crossroads there then. You don't like the way the world is, but you want something. What we've done in the past got us to where we've gotten. So that homeless shelter, that weekend at the homeless shelter, I want two out of you. That week you give down in Africa, we need two. I would much rather have the power of these hundred people. I would much rather have you guys doing something just a tiny bit different today than you did yesterday. Over the extended amount of a year, every single day, 365 days a year, that I would rather have a million people go down to Africa and try to feed or build an orphanage. Because what we have been doing is that. We go down there and we say, oh, I can't believe the poverty, I can't believe this, it's changed me. No, it hasn't. It doesn't change you. Because you come back here, go to your silk sheets, and do the same thing. But it's changed you. We do not care enough. Because you all agree with me the world wasn't where it should be. You can no longer rely on the government, the wealthy, the corporations. And then the other thing I hear is, well, I pay my taxes. <laughs> Think what you want. We need more. I'm actually... We need... That's it. If I had my way, I would get up here, one to two minutes, ask you to give more, and I would walk off. But in a very complex world, simplicity is the toughest thing for you guys to wrap your mind around. The simple fact that all I'm asking you for is just a tiny bit, to me, is the power of this movement. A lot of movements, a lot of things, a lot of people will ask you to alter your diet, to quit that job, to spend more time, something drastic. I'm not asking that. I'm begging you to do something today that you did not do yesterday. If you were in a hurry to get to that job you didn't like, and you didn't hold the door because that lady was five steps behind, not right behind you, hold the door tomorrow. If someone cut you off in traffic, and you flipped them off, honked your horn, and made sure they knew that they cut you off, don't do it next time. There's an old lady who needs her bags, or just anything. If there's certain things you don't see, because you're so consumed in your own little world, all I want you to do is to do that. And I'm hoping that the chances, the possibilities, the percentages of you doing that again the second day increases. That's it. That's it. In a very complex world, I'm going to say this for the third time, we need simplicity. 
We don't need another self-help book. We don't need another five to ten steps of how to be more successful, of how to be more happy, of how to do whatever it is we think we need to do. I, I'm, I want that human connection because the world needs it. Because you want your kids to grow up in a better world. Because you agree with me that this wasn't a good spot in our world. Not because of karma. Not because it's going to increase your business. Not because it makes you feel good, which it does. But because the world needs it. This is the most unique time this planet has ever seen. We will get through it, yes. But this is the most unique time. Everyone in this room knows the good, the bad, and the in-between. Twitter, Facebook, the news, we no longer can stick our heads in the sand. We no longer can absolutely, just ignorantly, blissfully ignore the negative in this world. We can't. It's impossible. It always finds a way into conversations, even with very positive people. We need different. We need just, we need just a tiny bit from 7 billion people. Just a tiny bit. Because all that stuff that's going wrong in this world, the economy, the wars, everything you don't like, you all had a part in. You can claim you did, you can claim you didn't vote for that person, you can claim whatever the hell you want to claim. But that negative stuff, you didn't make your voice loud enough to make sure it didn't happen. And you can say, well, I don't have the power, I don't have the influence, those guys know what's going on, I don't. Look at everything in the past, look at everything in history, look at everything that, was, that got done to change how we perceive the world. We've got to do something. We didn't get to this stage in our world overnight. We got there with tiny little, again, tiny little decisions we all made over an extended amount of time that got us to here. We all had a part in this. So I believe today would be one hell of a day to inch us back in a different direction. With those smiles, with that door opening, with that letting that person in the traffic. Because these tiny little things lead to not so tiny things, to a little bit bigger things, to medium things, to large things. So all that negative energy we spit out, all those times that we look someone in the eye and they don't look at us back, and we look at them weird. Every time a girl looks at another girl like, oh my God, did you wear that? Because <laughs> I watch my wife continuously. You guys, I figured it out. It's true. You girls dress for other girls, not for guys. And I see you guys eyeball each other up and down. And I see those looks. That, to me, breaks my heart. And I know it's just a simple thing. I know when I play basketball with my buddies and they foul each other and they literally get into pushing, I literally have to walk out of the gym in tears. That breaks my heart because I know that leads to bigger and bigger conflict. But just the simple fact that someone apologizes okays it for us to do it again. It's not okay. It's not okay. The world's not okay. You're not okay. Your kids are not okay. Things are not okay. They're not okay. I created this about four or five years ago. It's a piece of silicone. Everyone has seen those. You know you donate to a charity, you get one of these, you act like you care for a day and you throw it away and you don't wear it anymore. This is not that. This is a reminder. It's scientifically proven. Some scientists say you have 3,000 thoughts a day. Some scientists say you have about 40,000 thoughts a day. Whatever it may be, you have a lot of thoughts a day. This is a reminder that it's your turn to do good. That's it. It's an anchor. A lot of psychologists talk about something like an anchor. They need something physical. This is a great movement. This is a great idea. But again, it's only an idea. And life takes over, and we move on. When you do something good, something as simple as hold the door open, whatever it may be, smile, there's a physical act. You are going to physically take this off your wrist and hand it to that person. That's where the other three speakers talked about that human connection. It's something physical. You can look at a person and say, this is why I did this. I'm not trying to sell you insurance. I'm not going to kidnap you. I have no ulterior motive. I have nothing other than I'm a human who saw another human who needed help. Here, it's your turn. And charity and giving is one thing. But paying it forward is different. When you ask someone to pay it forward, you trust and empower them. You're at the same level, and you trust that they're going to do the same thing for someone else in the future that you just did for them. 
We do not like asking for help. We don't. Whether it's a friend or family member and you only gave them five bucks, you feel like a charity case. Paying it forward leaves everyone, all walks of life, at the same common ground. I did something for you, it's your turn. A lot of nonprofits and charities do amazing things. They, they give a bunch of stuff to inner city kids. They do all these things and they give it to them and it's over. The chain is broken. The chain is broken. Now they're all coming to this. They're going to help those inner city kids, but they're going to make sure that inner city kid knows it's their turn to help another inner city kid. We can no longer allow that chain to be broken. We can no longer allow our friends and family who claim someday they're going to do something for this world. Bullshit. Someday's not good enough. Today, tomorrow, sometime, very freaking soon. We can no longer let them off the hook. We can no longer look at our loved ones and say, I thought you were going to do something good two weeks ago. Oh, I just can't get around to it. Oh, that's fine. No, we can't do that anymore. Because you all agree with me the world's not where it needs to be. And you all agree with me you want things better. And you all agree with me that you can all do something. I'm not asking you to alter your lifestyle. I'm asking for just a tiny bit today that you did not do yesterday. That's it. I believe those simple little things done by everyone in this room, done by tens of millions, done by billions of people over an extended amount of time will get us back to where we want to be rather than those tiny little things done in the opposite direction to where we are now and where we all don't want to be. Simplicity in a complex world. Everyone, some of you have these on, some of you don't. We're going to get everyone a couple of them. All I'm asking, this is your choice. You can think we're crazy, you can think it's not powerful. Your choice to do this. Do something today, tomorrow, in the next week or so. Hold the door open, make someone smile, whatever you choose to do. I want you to remember what it was like to be a kid, to do something just because. Remember that thing all our parents told us to do? Just to be nice, just for the hell of it? Because every person that crosses your path, you're supposed to be nice to. I want you to remember what it was like to be a kid. But secondly, more importantly, I want you to see the reaction you get from that person when you hold the door open and that grown man or woman breaks down in tears. I want you to see how disconnected this world has become. And I'm hoping when you feel that and you see that, that you will wake up the next day and the possibility of you wanting to do it again, go through the roof. That's it. Simplicity, complex world. Will you guys do that for me? Please. Will you guys do that for me? Yeah. 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 Thank you. I'm done. I know. Did I go way over? No, <laughs> <laughs>